Hello everyone, it's Charlton. Please subscribe to my channel, tap the notification bell, like this video. Uh, that helps me to keep making videos and I would appreciate it majorly. So, uh, leaky, leaky faucet. And uh, I was dealing with one of these at the property we're working on, but now this is a rental property. Actually, tenants are downstairs right now. And um, it's leaky. It's not just a constant drip, but it actually flows out of there, as you can see, on its own. So I'm hopeful that it's just the stem in here. I changed that once a long time ago when I wasn't quite as good at these things. I'm gonna to try to do that now. It's a Moen, M-O-E-N, so it's a different brand of faucet. I gotta open it up first, shut off the water, and open it up um, to get the cartridge out, then take that to you know Home Depot or Lowe's and get a new one. And I hope that that's it, and I believe it is. So we'll see. That is totally nuts. That's gotta be somebody's pet. Right? I don't know. It was like something weird. And I put stuff like this. It's something like an eel. Like eel. First off, come out of the way. Get it! Oh my god! He's gone now. Trying to fix this faucet, and uh, there was that thing was right in the street. It's somebody's pet, I think. Always turn off the water first, which um, in this house they have shutoffs pretty much to everything. So you can isolate just that, which I'm doing right now. Hopefully those are the right ones. That was pretty crazy. It's a little iguana out in the street. I believe, I don't know what it was, whose it was. The water's off and uh, both hot and cold. Got to remove the plate, you know, obviously undo these screws. And, uh, but first you gotta remove this, this handle, you know, and it usually requires something really uh, thin, either a, fill, a flathead screwdriver that's kind of small and um, has a pretty tight edge, but, um, or a utility knife, whatever, but you have to remove that first. So let me just do that, open it up, I'll show you what it looks like. Handle's off, now I gotta take the plate off, obviously. the plate now I remember this one has like a special clip to um, to remove the the cartridge that's inside there so naturally you got to move this and it's got this special little clip right here that you have to pull out that before you pull out the cartridge you know that keeps it in place and uh, I think I'll try to do that right now very hopeful that that's the problem I'm pretty sure it is I think I'm gonna need to before I I'm hasty I'll take a closer look at it having a little trouble getting it off and you always want to take some uh, you know uh, take caution and not rush to just break something that you can't that you can't fix things that you're going to need to replace the cartridge you know um, just take a little time and i do think that when i first put this new cartridge in years ago maybe five years ago or more i didn't use this and so it's on there tightly i mean i can move it they said in the, you know in moan's actual instructions if this is a 1222 i don't think it is but it's close that it has to be in the on position I think there's a special tool that they have specifically for them, you know, for their manufactured product to remove that. It's like a uh, cylinder with a handle that <coughs> screws it off, but it doesn't, it's not screwed on there. And I can basically just take a pair of needle nose pliers and see that I can move it back and forth, you know. And it's not, it's not threaded on there, but now that I've done that, I believe, um, you know, that, that probably freed it up some, and I can probably uh, remove it. Let me just do that. Just a, let me try my own. I did, I got it, I just got it. So uh, it took a little strength, and I didn't, I didn't want, I wanted to hold this in place with my other hand and not destroy, you know, the piping, the stuff that's very expensive to replace. This will be fairly minor. I'll go get an exact match and uh, just replace it. And I'm almost certain that'll, ch that'll fix the leaking. Next to certain of that. Um, well, we'll see. 
I'll find out one way or the other. But I was getting get, beginning to get worried, and uh, but it just was it's just stuck in there, you know. So that's it. On to the uh, on to the store, Lowe's or uh, Home Depot. This is definitely not a twelve twenty two, by the way. The one I was watching in Moon's instructions was uh, didn't look anything like this, but I'll I'll find it at the store. This looks like the close, closest right here. This is the Moon 20, 12, 25. It's a little different in the body here, you know, but I think it's similar proportions and uh, that's gonna work, I'm fairly certain. I'm gonna head to Home Depot now and uh, see if there's something identical, but I think I'm pretty cool with that. You know, which is right there. It's 20 bucks. All right, man. They have the same thing here, the 1225, so I don't need it at Home Depot, but this is what I was talking about, the uh, core puller for like the handle to get out, the specialty tool to get out the, uh, the core, the cartridge. Um, but I was able to get it out. And that's it, man. All right, I'm just showing you the very inside of there. That's just water coming in, basically. The shutoff valves downstairs don't shut off completely because they're, they're old and that's pretty common. So some water's flowing through there. The water comes in from both sides, you know. This is the hot and the cold. I don't know which is which. But um, so, but it looks like there's nothing else in there. There's my new piece right there. And I'm just gonna grab it. I don't wanna grab it. I don't know, I'm being a little silly and paranoid. It's already actually lubed up. I'm gonna lube it up myself too. But you want this to go in with those notches there vertically. So, um, so those will be up and down and that hole needs to be facing upwards or else it'll be up, upside down. But with those notches vertically, the pin will fill, fit right over, over top of that when it's in there. And each one of those holes on the sides will be, you know, um, facing the two, uh, the two different hot and colds coming in, you know, and obviously turning, uh, turning the, the nozzle opens each of them up depending on whether you turn it to the left or turn it to the right. So I assume hot's on the left and cold's on the right. Right now it's actually in the on position although that doesn't really matter. This isn't the 1222 like I was describing before. That's much fatter. It's the 1225. And uh, one more reminder that when you're pulling that out it just was difficult for me because it's been in there for a while. I never lubed it up myself. It comes lubed up but it just took a little turning to kind of loosen that up because it might have just, uh, uh, due to the hard water or whatever, or just the, the pressure uh, formed like a seal and got stuck in there. Once I was able to, I mean, once I was able to grab it, you know, turn it this way, um, I was able to grab with the pliers, hold the pipe assembly with my other hand in place and gently but firmly pull. And then it just, boom, it just came out, you know? So it does come out. It doesn't need to be unscrewed or anything like that. They provide you with, this little thing, you know, and that just helps you to straighten those, those, um, the things that I was just showing you, uh, so that they're vertically on the very end here. You know, they fit perfectly over, over, over these two things, you know. And so I'm going to go ahead and lube it up and put it in there, and hopefully that, uh, that solves my problem. I believe it's going to. Silicone grease is just what you put on there. Yeah, I've already kind of put a fair amount on there, probably a little bit more than it's needed, but you know, um, just want to be rather uh, safe than sorry. Inserting it again with these um, ridges vertically and these holes, which makes these holes, because it's all one solid piece, these holes on the sides, the left and right sides. And um, all right, now I just need to put on the other pieces, but I kind of want to make sure I'm in good shape before I move on to the next step. Let me, hold, let me pause for a sec. Moving right along, I'm going to put the pin back in. Um, I should move around to the other side, but and that just goes right over there, just fit vertical pieces, okay? 
and notice the hole is on top. That's critical, otherwise the assembly's upside down and I guess it just won't work. I think I did that the very last time. Um, learned the hard way. You wanna put your washer back on. I think I'll do that right now. I even kinda scrubbed it with a piece of sandpaper on DW40. Um, sandpaper's great for getting rid of, get rid of uh, rust and put that right on there. I think that goes like it doesn't really matter, but hmm. put my sleeve back on. And actually, let's see. Let me clean that up. Just to illustrate this item, you know, it is useful to get it exactly lined straight up and down, you know, um, so you can see it's perfectly centered. And this washer will go right on here. That actually keeps the handle from going in too far, you know, um, and that kind of brushes up right against a, uh, there's a little ridge there I don't need to show you, that stops it from going any further, but that'll also stop the handle from going on. I clean this up, I'll put this back on. And you'll see, before I put that back on, there's still water going, going dripping, but I'm good. I mean, as you, as you push it in, that, that makes it stop. You know, when you go all the way in, just like when you turn it off, and actually the water's even slightly on, because that's in the on position. So when I turn it that way, now, now that's, there's, no, there's no dripping at all, but there's no water pressure. That's just from the faulty valve down in the basement doesn't, that doesn't completely shut off. You can even just hurt here and it just turned on. Again, that hole is facing forward. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put my um, sheath or whatever that's called, cover on. The washer's already on there and put the handle on. I'll put the plate on first and then put the handle on and, and, and be done, you know, and then go turn the water on and see if it's, if it's fixed. I think it is. I think I'm looking good. It's all assembled with the exception of the cap. You know, I still got to put that on, but it snaps right on. And I'm going to go downstairs and turn on both the hot and cold water. It's pushed in, so it's in the off position, you know, and uh, we'll see. We'll see if it works. Turning, turning on the water. I'm pretty sure this is hot, not that it really matters. And the cold, actually that's the hot. I can feel it. Set it back on and let's go check it. All right, the water is on full pressure. You know, I haven't turned it on and off yet, but right now that's a great sign. There's no drip, no leaking. And I'd bet almost anything we're there, you know, that it's good. So, and okay. that's some of uh, that's some of my, you know, my grease. I don't run through no problem. It's cold. Same thing. That's hot. So the directions are right, and now the question is, will that come to a stop when we're all done and not leak? And I mean, I'd say I'm looking good. I don't see a single drop. That's a great thing, you know? Um, not a single drip yet. And before it was, it was coming out, you know, and globs when it wasn't even turned on and off it was just a bad cartridge um bad core whatever you call it that problem is solved and that's uh that's the story there all right that's the end of this video man thanks for watching my videos please subscribe to my channel give me a like down below i gotta clean up here a little bit and i'm all done i'll see you in the next video later man